Hello and welcome back to OnChain Reaction. I'm your host, James Bennett, and today we're going to be looking at what's going on with Bitcoin on and off the chain. Okay, let's jump right into it. So we start here uh, by looking at volatility and seeing that volatility is continuing to fall as the market settles around $58,000 Bitcoin. Now what's really interesting here, you can see 30 days annualized volatility uh, in blue there uh, and the price in Bitcoin is in gold. The white dotted line across the, the chart is actually showing you at the current level of volatility which is about 60%. What does that look like you know, historically over the different bull markets and bear markets over the last three, three and a half years? And you can see really that volatility has dropped off much faster uh, than what we saw in January 18. Um, and that's actually a good thing uh, because that is demonstrating that Bitcoin is finding some sort of psychological support. Uh, there's less sort of speculative trading activity driving up volatility at these levels. Now, given the uh, macro market uh, backdrop, I would say that this is an extremely positive sign for a maturing Bitcoin. Okay, our first on-chain indicator this week, we'll be looking at uh, minor revenues. Uh, so miners have been able to sustain a $60 million per day revenue uh, through increasing their block production. Now, how do we know this? Well, looking at this chart, uh, we can see the total revenues uh, in blue at that $60 million uh, that started in around February and has been more or less sustained for the, the last couple of months. Uh, while price has been relatively flat, we saw declining volatility. We're sitting around $55,000, $58,000. And so, but, but fees uh, have been declining. And so remember fees, or I should say that miners' revenues are made up of two things. One is the newly uh, mined Bitcoin and the other is the fees that people pay uh, to miners to include their transactions in a block. Um, and in gold here, we're looking at what proportion of those revenues are attributable to fees um, versus the total, like as a, as a percentage of the total revenues. And we can see that there's a, the, uh, the, the uptrend that started in January 2020 has actually been broken um, in the last couple of weeks, uh, trending down now towards 10%, that gold line on the right hand side of the picture. So that means network demand has fallen slightly, uh, but miners are as bullish as ever uh, on the network as they are still in ramping up their production. Um, and you can see that here on the next chart, uh, as miners have ramped up their production and basically got ahead of the, the difficulty algorithm. Um, so as you probably know, Bitcoin's core code allows new Bitcoin, 6.25 Bitcoin to be precise, to be released every 10 minutes. Uh, if miners are actually extracting Bitcoin at a faster rate than every 10 minutes, then the program essentially adjusts the difficulty uh, in order to make it more difficult for miners to get those Bitcoins so that it slows them down from, let's say they're, they're mining a block every eight minutes, it slows them back, back down to 10 minutes. And this happens every more or less two weeks, it's 2010 blocks. With 144 blocks a day, um, and and um, you know when they are when miners that that is front running or, or accelerating that production, uh, what we see is that difficulty goes up, and if they're behind that 10 minute production, so say they slip to 12, 15 minutes, uh, then that difficulty drops back down. Um, typically, when price goes up, we see difficulty go up. Uh, because it means, okay, there's a higher honeypot uh, for miners to chase after. Um, and so their, their margins have widened and therefore they would increase their production. They dig or mine a little bit harder in order to get those Bitcoin. Um, and, and what we've really seen since January, that big uh, step up in, in difficulty, which you can see in the gray line there, is relatively flat. Okay, it's a, it's a steady uh, incline, but you know no major movements uh, for the last six or so difficulty adjustments until uh, this this particular one that was a couple of days ago uh, where we've seen the largest step up of the year. Um, so again, to say miners are bullish on Bitcoin, aren't we all? Okay, so uh, next slide here, we're looking at the on-chain settlement value uh, or volume that, that is happening on the Bitcoin network itself. I touched on this a couple of weeks ago that we've found this support around $8 billion a day of traffic being settled. And you can see here that we're really sticking quite closely to that. 
Um, so the dark blue line is a seven day moving average of the dollar transaction value that's being settled on chain um, every day. Uh, and, and you can see there was some sort of peaks and troughs, particularly from January until now. But really, there is a, a steady sort of baseline that's been found at about eight billion dollars per day. Uh, that's coming from all sorts of traffic from traders, investors, uh, possibly even remittances, uh, businesses uh, taking place on the network. That vibrant economy that we need in order to keep that price uh, going up. Um, it, it, it's clearly there and it's clearly active. And just remarkable sort of growth from what we saw even at the beginning of this year, that blue line down around $2 billion a day. So we've quadrupled our on-chain traffic. This happens every cycle. New people get involved, new entities uh, start to participate. Um, and, and because you know the, the actual uh, platforms are improving that people can access the network through, then we have new actors, new volumes coming in and the overall economy grows. Okay, so just two more charts. The first one, one that I really like to uh, look at uh, on the daily, if not every few days, uh, is the number of Bitcoin held by funds. So this represents largely the professional and institutional investment interest that's coming into Bitcoin. And now we have a whopping 4.2% of all Bitcoin that have ever been mined currently sitting in funds. And that could be you know, Grayscale in the US, or a number of the ETFs in Canada, Purpose, Osprey, uh, to name a few. Um, and then in, in Europe, we've got 21 shares, we've got uh, Bit, um, coin shares and the XBT product, Wisdom Tree, Han, you know, so they're all aggregated into these numbers. Um, but 4.2% of uh, the total Bitcoin mined. But if you actually consider that, you know, a number of the Bitcoin that have been mined are lost or inaccessible, you start to see that actually funds are holding a large amount of what would otherwise uh, be liquid Bitcoin. Um, so really creating that sort of supply glut, if you like, for, for buying and holding uh, Bitcoin that is potentially responsible for holding the price at these levels. Okay, and then 4.2% of Bitcoin are in funds and 1%, here we are, of mined Bitcoin are wrapped on the Ethereum network. It Basically, what it means is that um, Bitcoin is uh, locked up and for every unit that's locked up, a new Bitcoin unit is created on the Ethereum network. Those are substitutes uh, for one another. They can't both exist at the same time. Um, and and so, you know, we've got 1% of, of these uh, Bitcoin that have been mined now available, you know, for staking, uh, for investment portfolios in DeFi um, and, and, and all sorts of other sort of um, uh, solutions and services that investors can find on the Ethereum network. So what does it mean for Bitcoin? Well, as I touched on earlier, it means that we have fewer Bitcoin available on exchanges to buy um, those Bitcoin are either held in funds for long-term investment purposes or locked up, custodied uh, in order to be available on the Ethereum network. In both cases, it reduces the amount of liquid Bitcoin available for investors to buy on exchanges, meaning that if there is that demand uh, to invest in Bitcoin or to use uh, the Bitcoin network, then we are going to see further price growth. Okay, that is it from me for now and we will see you next time.